Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. This is the Wix online meeting number 77, middle of August. Still talking about Wix 310 and things like that. Um, as always, these meetings are recorded for those people that aren't here right now with us, although we have a decent peanut gallery, which is always kind of nice to see. Uh, before I run on anything, agenda, triage, because holy cow, we had a bunch of bugs just show up. Um, and whatever like that. And then I think we'll probably talk about WIS 310 because, well, we talk about WIS 310 until WIS 310 is done. But before we talk about WIS 310, we should go talk about the bugs that are open. Right, Bob? I think that's a good idea. All right, so let's go do that. Triage it is. Dun, dun, dun. What is it with 12 things open? And only a couple of them were left over from before, so I don't even know what we're... Mm. Anyway, <sighs> start at the bottom. From a month ago. Still open. Daris cannot be opened. Ah, please provide verbose log files of what is happening. So I assume we should keep this open for one more week and see if he comes back? I think that's a fine idea. I'll add a note saying hey. One more week. <laughs> there you go. This is a three eleven bug. I think we can open it now. Yes, especially since I think Jacob already is making a change for it. So 311. Um, this is the oh yeah, this is the XAML only. Mm -hmm. But I don't really speak XAML, so well, it's basically. Oh, I think I see what it's doing. Yeah, we're going to show something rather than an empty nothing. So I say we take this in 3.11 and call it good. That works for me. All right. Um, Open is good. Actually, yeah, I will go ahead and actually mark that. Right. All so right. We have milestones there. Oh, exception thrown by target of invocation. The tools isn't relevant. He he reads the tools version of target project image build. Ah, so Sean figured out the way it works. So can we make this bug go away? I defer to Sean. I think uh, mm -hmm. he's diagnosed everything. So, ah, right, the real error. That's what he did. He got a real error, and then it said the right thing. All right, cool. So let's take this bug in. Where do you want to take it, Bob? He has a pull request out. I took a quick look at it. It basically just catches the exceptions and stuff like that. So it's a matter of taking right. better error messages. Um, yeah, I'm I'm in favor generally of better error messages. All right. So you want to take this in 310? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Wix BA fails to retry after cancel. No. <laughs> okay. Set but never cleared. So, yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, where do you want this for 3, 310, 311, farther? I don't know. How often do, you, do folks think people run into this problem? Nobody's been complaining. Nobody, I've never seen anybody complain about this. I think we should fix it, but <laughs> nobody's ever complained about it. But it is a small fix, too. How about all those offsetting things? <laughs> Your judgment call, Bob. Yeah, let's take it. All right. Light should not show informational messages. 
Warnings are only useful people look at them. Well, we only show info messages when you run verbose. Should be suppressed as shown if pedantic. I guess we can move them from verbose to pedantic. I mean, I don't know. The verbose shows you how long they take, which is why we turn them on in our build. So I don't know. It's do we want to move these to pedantic? Pedantic. I don't really care. We could take them to. We can move into pedantic. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I don't really care. Three X, great, sure. It's not a bug though. It's a feature. Move these to pedantic. Can do that though. Print Eula functionality in Wixdrm base. Seriously, we still need to print these stupid things. Yeah, I did that, Jacob. Um, I, I, I want to say we don't do this, but um, instead we offer uh, basically open. Open in, in um, RTF, your oh. RTF editor yep. of choice? Yep. That way you can print it, you can save it, you can do all those things. Otherwise, you know. Uh, I'm actually surprised people want print over save. It's a good point. Printing seems to be the... Uh, the one percent, the half a percent case. Well, we've made it. Awesome. We've made it this far, and this is the first time people have asked for it. So, in with uh, NBA, yeah, in with NBA. I mean, <laughs> well, also this is you know opening it in in the RTF viewer is you know a, a two line function, if that, yeah. versus implementing printing. No, no, thank you. Um, so. You want to say, yeah. no, uh, suspend this and open one that says open in with standard BA? Open RTF, or do you want to? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Ah, oh, the fun bug. DTF bug, uh, people. Win 10x64, not x66. Okay, so. Have you reproed this, Bob? Um, I have reproed this um, in two different ways. All right. Uh, I reproed it with the message as specified um, on Windows 10 x64, mm -hmm. and I reproed it with a different message and a different part of the code on Windows 10 x86. How exciting. That is not the word I would use. Um, so, just to be clear, this is not a general problem of of running managed code custom actions on Windows 10. Mm -hmm. uh, this is specifically when you uninstall from the modern control panel, modern ARP. Can we uh, change the title to maybe say that? This is a little more scary. No. Than... Yeah, it's technically correct. Apps and features. Well, yeah. Okay. The... So it's. It's uninstalled though, only. Not in oh you can't install from there, so right. Um, fair enough. Then so it only happens on uninstall because that's the only way you can launch from Windows ten apps and features. Uh yeah. correct. Yeah. And if you launch from the command line, yeah. from an MSI, or from desktop desktop ARP, everything's fine. Okay. So we should fix this. Um, at some point. So this is currently open in 3.10. Do we hold 3.10 to fix it? I don't know, man. It's it's uh, it's a bug with you know plenty of viable workarounds. Um, but it's bad user experience. It, it's horrible user experience, and of course, you know this is not. Yeah, you, you can't. You know, you have no control. I mean, the developer has no control over. You know, uh, without a blocker, the developer has no control over whether the app is installed in Windows 10. So it's just. I mean, and truthfully, it's a horrible user experience from the the new ARP. 
because it doesn't even show a damn error code. No message saying that the uninstall failed. It just goes back um, because, yeah. you know, Windows Jeff 10 is um, halfway done. Um, J Jacob, no, we don't know why. Uh, you know, from the message, you can look in the SFX CA code and say, oh, that's where it's failing. Um, you know, I'm just, you know, I can speculate and say however they did the, the modern ARP, however they invoke MSI through that, you know, uh, WinRT code path is just setting things up weirdly. And you know, I can't even explain the different behaviors on x64 versus x86. Mm -hmm. On x86, we get past the error on x64. Hmm. Gets farther. And then fail with an, with an error code that has one hit on Google. Uh -huh. One unhelpful hit on Google. And Bing, for that matter. Um, and it's a Win32 code coming out of the the CLR hosting API, whereas that expected to be a CLR failure. But um, so it's a mess. It's a mess. Um, there are workarounds. Um, I can tell you, I. I certainly don't know that code very well, and also I'm not running on Windows 10, which really complicates the bugging. Um, and I have no idea what you know what the causes are, and I'm like I said, pretty sure it's plural causes. Um, I would like to fix it. I'm afraid if we fix it, you know, we're kind of opening ourselves up for you know weeks. Of delay, and in the end, you know it's probably you know it's it's probably not a DTF bug. It's very likely a Windows thing. Well, that DTF uh, may have to adapt to. Yeah. Well, yes, yes. Sorry, not not trying to suggest that you know we just wait. Although I considered that approach. Um, well, to me, the real question is, are we taking this to 3.10? Well, that's kind of what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, Heath, I don't want to throw up UI. I have no, well, again, this is, you know, I don't know how they're invoking it, so I don't know if anything short of a message box from a custom action is going to do the trick. Well, yeah, the native code would have to. Uh, yeah. The native uh, the native code can detect what's going on, maybe. You know, yeah, you're like, how far are you from the fix? Who knows? Uh, you have to, uh, presumably, once you know what it's doing, hopefully the fix after that is not that big a deal, but. Well, like I said, plural. Uh, Jacob, this is only with MSI. It's sorry, it's in an MSI um, directly from ARP. We haven't tried uh, launching a, bun a managed code bundle for uninstall from this thing. <sighs> like, does the uninstall of the Wix bundle work? Yeah, I hadn't even considered. Oh God, hadn't even considered a managed BA. Mm -hmm. My assumption is that certainly a native code BA is going to be fine. It's an entirely new process. Mm -hmm. And Burn is in charge of invoking MSI, mm -hmm. which seems to be the problem. Um, right. Well, yeah. Right. But it is exclusively through the modern ARP. Like I said, old ARP works, um, command line works, right-click MSI works. Um, well, 
Uh, Heath, I have not tried it with anything other than immediate CAs, but of course, all good deferred CAs have a, an, inter, an immediate counterpart, so pretty much everything is broken. And this is this. So what DTF does is launches itself again by by using run DLL thirty two. Mm -hmm. It's hard for me to believe that they broke that mm -hmm. because a lot of stuff relies on run DLL thirty two. Mm -hmm. um, if they did, then you know we have work to do. Not only you know finding the right solution, but actually implementing it because that's a neat trick to save a bunch of code. But anyway, it's, you know, if you have any immediate custom action... I'm having a hard time getting excited about this for 3.10. The only thing that I, I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't really want to, I don't want to do the work because no matter what, we're very likely in, um, uh, we're in for, for having to muck around in some low level code that affects every DTF custom action. So that's mm -hmm. no good. Um, but this is really a horrible experience. So this is one of the, you know, the release manager in me says we should fix it. Someone who might get tagged to actually fix it says no. Well, I'm 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 also thinking about all the people that have already released. Um there are a lot of, it's, I mean, it's this isn't going to help any of those products that are out there. So that the question is fair. when do we want to get them the fix? And I'm right. not necessarily really excited to to block Visual Studio 2015 access for those people that are already screwed by this thing right. that we need to get a fix. I mean, again, I'm not saying we shouldn't fix it. Right. And, right, right. and if the fix comes along, I mean, all right, let's say we had this fix right now, and it's, you know, it's interesting. Presumably it's going to be interesting, whatever it is. It's not going to be like, oh, yeah, set this to true. I mean, it could be. But <laughs> I'm just saying, like, let's say it's it's halfway interesting. We'd sit on it for what? A couple months? I mean, getting people to test all the other custom actions, like just the forward going custom actions? Right, right. So to me, I mean, if anything, this is a three ten two <laughs> if we come up with a fix that, you know, we really need to push this out. Right, right. Um, no, that that's actually that's a very good point. Um the fact that uh this affects this isn't just you know a regression in three ten. This is everything has it. Mm -hmm. It's clearly you know pretty clearly not a DTS you know root cause. Um, even if we have to come up with a fix in DTF for it. Mm -hmm. um, so so that's that's interesting. And uh, Jacob just said that burn works. So managed oh. UI works. Ah, cool. So that's good. So this is really DTF. I, I'm i inclined that we put it in 3.11. We find whatever the fix is, and if we want, if we, and then we go from there of the, you know what, uh, we're doing a 3.10 R2, like we did a 3.9 R2, just to get the DTF bug out sooner. So the DTF fix the DTF bug out. The DTF fix out so that people can rebuild against it sooner than waiting for 3.11. Yeah. Not clear to me that waiting for 3.11 and waiting for 3.10 R2 with this fix in it is going to look a lot of different, depending on how big 3.11 gets. Well, and also depending on, you know, when someone finds the fix for the bug. At the moment, yeah. I'm, I would lean, to, if we're not going to take it in 3.10 and it has to be, you know, If we're not going to take it in 310 because it's too big, then, you know, I, I kind of lean towards saying, well, let's, you know, the, there was an announcement today about, uh, I forget what they call it. Um, I don't know, it started with build 10.525 or something. 
you know, the Windows Windows 10 is getting lots of, of changes, lots of cumulative updates have already come out. Mm -hmm. um, they're talking about something that sounds like a service pack, you know, coming soon. Um, so I, I'd be inclined because I don't really want to get into the gory details of it to wait and see if it's a Windows bug. You know, maybe we open a support for a support ticket at Microsoft to see if someone can look at it. Well, there. we're not going to, Microsoft's going to be, I, I expect there's going to be some products at Microsoft that are using DTF. Eh, that's a good point. <laughs> so just go find one of them and say, hey, have you tried uninstalling on Windows <laughs> on your latest operating system? Oh, no, don't, 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 <laughs> that's don't. a really good idea, yeah. isn't it? Maybe you should just go fix it. <laughs> or, you know, and the, I, I'm just saying, I think we put this in, I don't think we hold Visual Studio 2015 support for this bug. Yeah. Yeah, um, no, that's reasonable. If we had changed DTF, I'd feel maybe a little bit more bad about it because then we'd be pushing everybody to Visual Studio 15 knowing that they're going to pick up this bug, but that's not what I'm going to face. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. We'll just let that let that go. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, no, I think for me, your your point that you know, there's a long backlog of Wix versions that have this problem is what does it for me. Yeah, all of them. Well, yeah, basically, yeah. Um, so, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm... 3.11, and if we need to do a 3.10 R2 for it, I, I would probably do the extra work to do that if if this turns out to be not a fix in 3... Uh, a, yeah, you guys need to fix this because you do not operate in the new world order. You'd be like, all right, right. well, let's get this fixed out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. We Add uninstall MSI package product code to let burn uninstall packages. Oh. Okay, whatever, but GAC. All right. Um, cross scope upgrades is probably the best reason to support this. Yes. I, I, it's a fine feature. I mean, we've talked about it before, but right. uh, I, I think we should we should have a whip for this <laughs> because I think we have to think about what we'll to think. About. Does it uninstall packages only on install? Does it uninstall these packages during uninstall? On repair, you know those kind of things. We just spell it out, talk about it, make sure we get it all spelled out. But otherwise, yeah. I mean, the cross scope upgrades—it's just something stupid in MSI. And it seems like reasonable to do. File downgrades hurts my head, but yeah, yeah. Hello. I opened it, so I have no, you know, no comment. Well, I'm hoping you take the feature and take the whip, so then you agree. Well, I don't know that I agree that much. <laughs> All right. Well, it's still a fine thing to put in 3X. Yeah. Seems certainly in 4 if you didn't want it in 3. Um. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'll leave it in 3 for now. Could and I will sign it to myself bundle upgrade. for a whip. You can't work around with a bundle upgrade because bundle upgrades upgrade at the end, so that won't do you good. All right. Now this one. Ship the Wix toolset private key. Right. So, so I was the one that has kept this key private for all the time for this very purpose here, is the unique identity. We would know if we were dealing with a custom build versus a a an official build, and it's not a security thing. It's a clearly if you built it this way. It, clearly, you will have a different key for your build. Therefore, we don't have to deal with bugs from your crazy build um, and stuff like that. That is true. Um, the downside for an open source project, both this is something both that I agree with and that you know comes from like uh, you know people on uh, open open source dot net. Um, it, it, and then it applies to, in general, open source projects that are built with .NET. If they keep the key secret, 
then in for some projects, um, it's all but impossible to have a successful fork because if your project is in any way a library, for example, no one can build on it without having to target the official one and your fork. Well, okay. I mean, if a fork can be successful, people will build against it, but okay. Well, it's impossible to create a drop-in replacement. How about that? That, that, I, way. that, that That's true. Uh, that's true. That's part of the knowing that it wasn't the same. <laughs> But well, it's knowing it's not the same and being completely unable to do anything with that knowledge other than you know I don't know brutally accept it. Yes, it's an all or nothing thing. Yeah, um, and and obviously you know a fork can uh, you know can sign it with its own key, but then you're you know you're stuck. Yes, you've uniquely identified yourself as being not the original fork. Um, but if your project is something that is used as, as a library, then, you know, people... The, the problem is .NET, right? .NET wants to enforce this stuff, um, which is good if you want it. But if you don't, then, you know, the, the workarounds are pretty awful. You know, it's like if you want to support a fork, you have to ship, as far as I know, there's no way other than shipping new, you know, you have to essentially fork your own code to support the upstream fork. Uh, it makes sense if, if you know, you're trying, uh, it makes sense if, I think, it makes sense if you're trying to, um, Uh, say, say Microsoft, as they wanted to years and years ago, wanted to ship Wix. It, it would make sense for them to do their own key, I think, because you know they'd be signing up to support something, and they don't want to just support you know every random uh, fork of Wix. That, that's not terribly different than what we have here. I'm not. Ex extremely excited to have people go off, build their own versions, and then come back here and say, hey, here's this bug. I mean, we get that enough from Heath. <laughs> hey, here's this bug. bug. No, we don't have that bug, <laughs> which we're going to see today. Um, so it's like I, those those drive me batty as it is. I don't – this key <laughs> – sorry, Heath, you're here, and it's a perfect case. It's a case in point for my my example here. It's it's the it's crazy things just saying, like, Hey look, we rebuilt it, we did all this stuff. And you know, the same thing's gonna happen with someone who forks it and signs it re signs it. The, I mean there's no you don't get any, any production out of that. No, but you'll know very quickly. How? What? Like, in a routine. So I'm specifically talking of. Bug of or, you're right. You won't. If you're using the core tool set, you know you're not going to. The, the signing, whether it's signed or how it's signed, is is you know irrelevant, right? I, I'm specifically thinking of all the the cases we have. Um, well, so there are two main cases. One is Wix site DLL. Um, you know, there are plenty of, of tools you can build on, and we're doing that more and more, like with PDBs, right? So you need Wix, Wix DLL. Um, and the other case is extensions. You know, yeah. there aren't that many out there, but there are a few. And, you know, dealing with them, dealing with, with third-party extensions means you're locked into using only the, you know, the one true Wix tool set. It's not a bad thing, but I just sorry. I get. I guess what it boils down to for me is I don't see any any benefits from from having a unique identity. 
and the guidance from the .NET team seems to be strongly against using it for anything else. Any other votes? Sean? This open source sentence is new, of course, because Microsoft wouldn't talk about it before. Uh, that would not surprise me. Yeah, that. But, yeah. Because they, I mean, obviously Microsoft ran into this, right? Yeah, and they, no, they, and, they, yeah. They've open source have. MS Build, and it's, you know, almost, almost useless. Um, because you can't drop it in. You know, nothing. So MS Build is, is another good example because you build on top of it. Anything that you build on top of, having the, the signing key be secret just breaks the world. You know, it, it prevents anything other than um, the original open source project from, from you know, having success. I understand your argument. I'm, I'm not sold. <laughs> I don't know what that means, Heath. They can't. Forks have an uphill battle. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. You can't argue that any other way. And it's not just Forks. It's also development in general. It's true. There is, you know, junk in there and uh, to deal with this. It makes junk it harder to system. test. It makes it harder for... Yeah, it's a little hard. Non for non for okay. Well, no. You know. How how do you do skip verification on a machine without the .NET SDK installed? Which by the way you can now only get by installing Visual Studio or the Windows SDK. Um the truth is there are register entries I think. That's how I've always what done they it. are. I, I always run a batch file that writes the reg keys for me, but yeah, okay. Okay. Um it also makes it harder to use Wix in house, even if you're not forking it. You forking can create it a private build. I, I, if you want to create a private build, I agree with that. It does make it harder to use it inside a company. I would believe that. And it also makes it harder for people to do work on a private build and therefore contribute changes back or thereafter contribute changes back. I don't. If the only way to get your change in and, you know, realistically made part of your build is to, you know, your overall build is to, you know, test it as you as well as you can using skip verification and whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. But you then have to, you know, submit it and hope that it gets into a build before you can, you know, test it in production, so to speak. I, it's true. Sorry, I, I'm. I guess where where I'm coming from is, I. There are a bunch of disadvantages, and I'm not clear what the advantages are. And that's why identity. <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. That's all I got. <laughs> but that's not a thing. What's the advantage? What What's the benefit from having a unique identity? I guess the ability to clearly root cause uh, ours versus theirs kinds of thing. Oh, I see. You got there. Yeah, only supporting official builds, like Sean says, things like that. That's that's it. That's the benefit. It it's there's one hundred. I I one hundred percent agree that it is a benefit for us, not for other people. I totally agree with that. Um, well, and I have, <laughs> and it comes with some overhead, even on our side is your argument, like testing on another machine does require adding strong name skipping and all that kind of stuff. Well, I'm, and I'm saying everyone runs into that. This isn't an either or. Everyone runs into that. And given the fact that no one is paying a support contract to Wixtoolset.org, I, I guess I don't understand the, you know, 
I don't understand why we would care about only supporting the official builds. If someone comes at us with an, a bug from an unofficial build, it's not going to repro, and we'll say, you know, push back. It doesn't work. This Again, this is why I see, you know, the value in someone who has to, who, who is providing support on a, on a contractual basis or implied contractual basis as, you know, if it ships in a product that supports it. Okay, I understand that. I mean, pain in the ass because all of the problems still exist. But, okay, I can, you know, I can accept that you don't want, you know, some random build. Although, again, you have to prove it, and that's, you know, not going to show up typically. Um, I just I don't see how it's a problem for the Wix project. But I'm the only one arguing for it, so how about I just suspend it? Yeah, and I'll, I'll think I. Nobody's ever made a. Nobody's ever made a. I honestly made an argument for it. Um, for it being for 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 publishing the private key. Um, until I open the bug, you're saying? Yes. Okay. Or the feature, whatever you want to call it. Issue. Um, yes. So, I'll think about it. I, it's the. I guess. Yeah. I, I I've operated in this world for that one thing for so long. You're basically making an argument that it doesn't add that much, and the costs on the other side. Because it doesn't add that much, the costs are tip it the other direction. And I'm um, like, uh, all right, we'll think about it. I mean, I've not swayed in the 15 minutes we've been talking about this bug. Not completely swayed. I guess I'm. I will have to think about it. There, there. Are, it's it's uh, also not something you come back from. It's kind of a one-way trip. If you publish the private key, you can't go back and being private um, without hosing the world. Which you do at the next major release. Right. So if we did it at 4, and then we would be hosed until 5, kind of thing. Yeah. Or we could go back to 3. No, wait. Um. <laughs> I don't know. There is another way, another way of what the uh, too many pronouns. I think in that to go back the shot to six or higher way. All right. Well, we'll think about it. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Let's do the other bugs. We'll keep thinking about that one. Theme viewer doesn't work properly when it can't find an image. That's true. Theme viewer gets upset when it can't find anything that it wants to find. Well, it gets silently upset. It's kind Sil of well, aggressive. I mean, it, yeah. It, so I, I agree. It'd be great if this was fixed. Not in 3.10, but 3x, whatever. It's all kinds of good work that could be done in yeah, theme viewer. And, and I a lot of low hanging fruit. Sean, the, the, the theme viewer is really, really nice to have when you know, if you're doing anything with themes, and now that we're shipping the themes, it'd be really nice if, if theme viewer. It's not the other thing it needs to do is Wixel hard. files. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It needs to handle Wixel files. So there's a whole lot of features that theme viewer could have to make it that much more useful to do. But I totally agree with that bug. Not for 310 though. Being a fantastic bug for 3x. Whenever someone wants to go grab it. Cool. Uh, yeah, fine with me. I would say probably if we're going to make an investment there. It makes sense to do a new four rather than three. But hidden persisted variables are written to the state file in plain text. Oh, really? I guess that doesn't surprise me. Hidden yeah. just means that hidden just means that it's not written to a log. Not that they're never 
written in memory. Although now I guess they're secure, but they're probably not, aren't they now? Is that the change? Hidden ones were also secure, so now they're not being written to the state file. So yeah, that is sad. Of course, what are what are the options? You could encrypt them with the machine key, I think. Oh, yeah, that would work. Okay, yeah. So that you don't have to... So at least if it got off the box, you'd be able to do something with it. So. Okay, yeah. So totally could be in 3x thing. Wix standard BA doesn't format variables in an edit box. Mm, probably doesn't. That's tricky. Why would you, I wasn't clear on this. Why why would you want it to? What would what would the value be when you got it back? No, that's actually probably the problem. I mean you get a new variable. Or you know, the variable associated with the edit box, but you wouldn't want it to touch any referenced variables. And I don't want to write the code that would make that happen. Um, yeah, this is one of those don't format things kind of bugs. I'm not exactly sure what you do with it. I'm not sure that the current behavior is wrong. Well, Although, I guess there's no way to get It's probably wrong some of the time. <laughs> well, I'm just trying to think of, you know, what what would you use it for where it would make sense for it to be one way? One I guess way? I can see... Your name is not a bad one. Right, exactly. I'm wondering if that's the only one, but... <laughs> oh, there are probably others, but yeah. Hmm. John has an interesting point. It's what the custom BA is for. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, actually, actually, I mean, oh, oh, man, yeah. This, there's no way to give a, a variable a value and have it formatted before it gets to the edit box. That's the same as okay. Never mind. functionality was added in 3.10. Which functionality? The functionality to add edit boxes? Oh, without escaping the value. That's new in 3.10? It used to not load it. What does it not load it mean? Oh, it doesn't initialize the edit box with the value of the variable. Oh. Right, okay, it was blank. Oh. Well, that was a bad idea on our part. Well, I was a little bit more gentle about it, but okay. Wait, how did this work for the op? The oh, did the the BA have standard code or have code in it to load the options in the path? The path it it I think explicitly so. did that one. Hmm. I don't think we could do anything else. So now the question is, do we format it and then? Means that as soon as you put I it in the edit box, then it would overwrite the value from the value that it had to the value it now gets. The alternative is, you know, we have a we have a set variable custom action. <sighs> um, the ordering on those is not much fun, but yeah. Um, um, uh, Sean, where did we add literals? Those are built-ins, right? Only built-ins can be literals. You can't define something be literal. I think we, if 
I remember this. We discussed adding literal as a Wix 4 thing. Right. So that you could have a literal, which would then mean we could do something a little more interesting here, like the if the edit box gets a string and it's literal, then clearly you get what it is, and if it's not literal, then clearly we should format it before giving it to the edit box kind of thing. Right, and so and I remember in Wix 3, there's no way to specify a literal in that we could maybe expose that in 4 if we ever hit a case where we might want to do that. We probably could do it in 3, too. All right. You declare a variable as not type string, but of type literal, and then it will be done. We just have to figure out how to make that work on the back end. Mm -hmm. I mean, I... There, done, right? My job here is done. Someone else can write it. No. Um, however that works. I think it's going to be a four thing, though. I think it's going to be too much in three to kind of get that working. Yeah. Like, yeah, I agree. So I would say we could take this in 4X and maybe change the behavior in 4X such that formatted variables are now formatted unless they're, I mean, non-literals are formatted and literals are not formatted. Cool. All right. Of course, you know, waving hands saying that somehow we're going to have literals come out of, you know, the world, but there we go. All right, cool. Are we done here? That was the last one. Seven. No, I'm joking. Uh, Bob's not been typing. He's been talking too much. Oh, shoot. What did we just do to 310? Nothing. None of those came to 310? Really? Did none of these come to 310? I guess some of them did, but we already have PRs for them, so it's not going to be that bad. Yeah, we're taking this in 310. And you said yeah. we take that in 310, but those already have pull requests for them. Right. So that just leaves Mike's bug that I don't know if we have a pull request for, because I just realized that we have... Um, I'm not getting mail about pull requests, um, so a whole bunch of things have been building up that I didn't even realize. Um, all right, so Mike's going to work on his today. We have the pull requests, things like that. So where are we at with 310? This I'm not stressing because I know I can do this after we ship, you know, a short window after we ship. So uh, That's it. Nothing doesn't have a PR except for Mike's mm -hmm. and yours in your magic window. Um Mine's online, which makes it awesome. <laughs> can change it whenever. Yeah. Yes, we should do that with everything. Um, so that's it, really. I mean, okay. as soon as I get a chance to review all the, the pull requests, then there's no reason we can't do a build and declare it RC2 and, uh, you know, set a date. And we've taken very little, so, you know, I'm okay if the date is close. What's close? Two or three weeks. So, 31st? That would be a week. Oh, 7th? 4th? No. Sorry. Yeah, somewhere around there. Oh, wait. Uh, when is Labor Day? I don't know. I always lose track of it. It's the 7th, I think. Ah, wouldn't that be fun? Oh, hey, it's our holiday. <laughs> oh, I was so hoping for S'mores Day. <laughs> that's the 21st, right? No, that's the 14th? Or no, the 10th, I think. Oh, and that was. Didn't create a bug for port. All right, so we have a pull request with no bug associated with it. 
don't serialize specific variables in the elevated burn process. There's no bug for this. When are we taking this? Right, what do we do? Oh, and to fix 4630. 4630 is in 310. Oh, this is already fixed. It says it's fixed. Oh, so there's more? allow it to come through. The installer name. I don't think the installer version. Maybe the installer version? Probably not, because we do math on it. Not the login use. Like, how did you pick these, Sean? Just paths because of the elevated thing? Yeah, all the folders. But really... Really, we shouldn't allow anything through except a very small set of the built-ins. Like, why would we let version NT and version NT 16 through 64? Oh, can you not set them in the unelevated process? Because they're built-in? How many of these built-ins can you actually oh, set? Because they're built-ins. That's a good point. None of them. So you're you're basically trying to poke in memory to set them then. Okay. Well, that that. All right. So you can't do this accidentally. to say that none of these should be able to be passed through. Which is a whole lot more of them. Bob, thoughts? Well, again, I open the bug, so I'm... A little bit uh, biased. Um, I guess I'm. Yeah, I guess I'm not clearly seeing here. I, I don't. I don't want any of the built-ins to be overridable, except to the extent that they already are. This was specifically about. It, well. So the original bug was I have these values that I'm trying to pass to an MSI and I'm, you know, passing them formatted as MSI properties. 
and those things weren't working. Right. But that did include the built-ins. But I was never trying to modify a built-in. We need to take this bug in 3.10. This is something we introduced in 3.10, right? Because you couldn't pass you couldn't pass the values of these through before. Yeah, we need to take this change in 3.10. Now, my we need to take a fix for this the repercussion of the bug um, in 3.10. My thinking is that we shouldn't let you pass any, uh, you shouldn't be able to set any built-ins through, which means I don't think we need another variable. I think we just go, if it's built-in, you can't set it. Am I missing anybody? Except for the ones that already allow you to pop over. That, that's like the, that's where I'm the, coming from. Yeah, the reboot pending guy, I think, or whichever one it is. Force restart. Right. It's the ones that can be settable. The unusual built ins that can be overridden. So does that make sense, Sean? So that'll mean this diff hopefully is smaller. It'll basically be if built in, don't process it wherever that is. Serialize. No, I'm saying if it's built in on the... Like Wix bundle name. Yeah, like Wix. one I know is set. That settable. can be set. And that should be able to be set across. Um, and so... Um, where is the... Is it here? This little block of code? Basically, on the elevated side, it should go, oh, this is a built-in. I will not let you serialize that in unless it... This is a non-overridable built-in. <laughs> there are very few overridable built-ins. Right. So, good. So, I, I think we should probably go that way. Now, but there is a set of bun of variables that can be overwritten like this variable installer name, right? That's Wix bundle name, right? I think so. So that should allow to flow over so that it can be set in the registration. But only because it's explicitly marked as one of the built-ins that can be overwritten. Unless we just handled bundle name differently. I don't remember. And it's never a bolt built in. No, it must be a built in. I don't know. It's been too long since I delved deep into that code to know for sure which way it is. Sean, does that make sense? That way we don't we don't have to maintain a list of things that are allowed to be passed over. It's the other way around. Here are the here are the set of things that can be set, which is already true. So even if you were to hack on your own memory and your own process to set things that you can't set, they're still going to be ignored on the elevated side. So it's going to be like, well, nice try, but that's not one of my overridable built-ins, so you can't set that either. And it ignores it. Honestly, it should probably write out to the log file or something. but Or maybe you should just ignore it. I don't know. Who's going to see this? Someone that was hacking at it, right? Cause otherwise, we did it to ourselves, so... Um, installer name is actually not Wix bundle name. Okay. It looks like Wix bundle name is just uh, your, is a standard variable. It's just yeah, a normal okay. variable. That's what I thought then. I, that, that makes me think that no built-ins can be overridden and we just handle Wix bundle name. We call it a built-in on the documentation, but it's not actually a built-in. And if that it is... That is likely true. Yeah, and so if, if we do have built-ins that can be overridden, then I think what it should be, it should be a a whitelist versus a, a blacklist, right? So this is a blacklist. This is listing all the things that are not allowed. It should be the other way around. It should be a, this is allowed to be provided over because that list should be far shorter than a blacklist. It's also easier to maintain from a security point of view, a whitelist than it is to maintain a blacklist. 
because blacklists keep growing, where whitelists grow only when you realize you made a mistake. <laughs> or rather, you know when you made the mistake with a whitelist. I want this to work. Oh, yeah, we'll allow that. Versus a bad guy using it for a very, very long time until someone trips across it and goes, hey, did you notice that this could be um, used in a bad way? Um, we probably should have a bug track in this change. Yes? Or we can just reopen 4630. Or open I don't care. Whichever way you guys want to do it, I'll let you guys decide. But we should track this thing because this is actually not good. That We don't want to ship 310 with this issue. Which might make it harder to make, hit Labor Day. All right, cool. John says reopen. That means we're going to reopen it, right? Got a plus one from John. Um, thank you for finding it, Sean. Very good hunting, 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 all that kind of good stuff. Other stuff. Wix 310, close. Maybe Labor Day. That'd be pretty cool, right? Labor Day? Woohoo, we'd stick with our holiday theme. Just because we can. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> All right. We're actually six minutes over. That's good. John's been beating on it. That's good. It's always a question of when we make burn changes, how many of those have to be, how well they get tested, but yeah, whatever. All right. Well, if there's nothing else, I think we'll call it for the day. And then the recording, get everybody back to their regularly scheduled meetings and such like that. Jacob already bailed on us early, so we'll call it good. Um, I think that's it. Anything else, Bob? I'm good. All right, so we're close on 310, but not quite there. It's basically close, no scar. Quiet, quiet. My office is warm right now, so I'm like, I want to take a nap or something. Um, Heath is typing a book. You should hit enter so we can start deciding if we need to hold the meeting for the end of it. So I just keep on on. Da 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 so we'll see everyone here again. And until then, you guys take it easy. Bye.